Welcome back to English Classes Online. My name is Benjamin. Today's video is on mixed conditional sentences. Learn how to communicate more effectively. If you are new to this channel, kindly subscribe to the channel by clicking on the subscribe button below. Click on the bell icon as well so that whenever a new video is uploaded on this channel, you will be notified instantly. Let's uh, dive into the lesson right away. First, let's take a look at the agenda for today's episode. Number one, what is a conditional sentence? Number two, an overview of the conditionals. Three, what is a mixed conditional? Four, types of mixed conditionals and how to use them correctly. Let's take this one by one. First, what is a conditional sentence? A conditional sentence is one that expresses something that must be true or happen before something else can be true or happen. As the name implies, a conditional sentence uh, contains a, a conditional clause which states the condition that must uh, must exist before another thing uh, happens or becomes true. So a conditional sentence is made up of an if clause which states the condition and a main clause that states the result. For example, if you work hard, you will pass your exams. If you work hard, is the if clause that st states the condition if you work hard all right then the result is this if you work hard then this will happen if you don't work hard another condition you know if you don't work hard you will fail your exams if you work hard you will pass your exam. So that is a conditional sentence. It is a sentence that expresses something that must be true or happen, or a condition that must exist before something else can be true or happen. So that's exactly what a conditional sentence is. And uh, if you want to have details of uh, conditional sentences, you can check in the description below. You will find a link to a video that I have uploaded on conditional sentences and how to use them correctly. All right. Now that we have seen what a conditional sentence is about, let's now have an overview of the conditionals. Let's go through it. Uh, you know that our focus today is on mixed conditionals, mixed conditional sentences, but how can we talk uh, about mixed conditional sentences without first uh, having a clear understanding of what a conditional sentence is in the first place? You can't mix what you don't even know about, all right? so. Let's have an overview of the conditionals, what they are. Now, the conditionals at a glance, all right? Now, we have four types of conditional sentences. Uh, we have the zero conditional, we have the first, second, and third conditionals. Now, the zero conditional, uh, the zero conditional states an actual condition. It states something that actually happens. It is used to talk about general truth, facts, or habits. Now, the structure is if plus simple present and then followed by the another simple present. Now, for example, if you put a cube of sugar in water, it dissolves. All right, if you put a cube of sugar in water, it dissolves. If you put a cube of sugar in water, it dissolves. 
Now, that's a scientific fact. It has been proven over and over. It is part of human experience that once you put a cube of sugar in water, it will, it will dissolve, all right? If you put a cube of sugar in water, it dissolves. Now, here we have the E, all right? Simple present. Of course, we have a subject, which is you. Then put simple present, you know? We are looking at the verb because the verb is the mandatory element of the sentence. If you put, put is simple present, a cube, of, a cube of sugar in water, then the simple present, it dissolves. Simple present, dissolves. All right? Now, if it rains, the streets get wet. All right? So, that is the zero conditional. Then the next is what is called the first conditional. All right? The first conditional. And this is a likely condition. The first conditional states a likely condition, something that is likely to happen. All right? And the structure is if plus simple present plus simple future. For example, if you study hard, you will pass your exams. If you study hard, you will pass your exams. All right? And uh, this is used to talk about a likely future event, a likely condition. It is called a likely conditional. The zero conditional is known as the actual conditional. The first conditional is called the uh, likely conditional because it is used to talk about something that will likely uh, happen in future. If you study hard, you will pass your exams. All right? If you don't leave at once, you will be late. If, you, if we don't leave early, we may miss the flight. All right? So something that is likely to happen. So it has a present condition with a future result. All right, so that's exactly the way it is. Then let's look at the second conditional. And this second conditional is an unlikely conditional. It's not something that is likely to happen. The structure is if plus simple past. It has a past condition and then a past result. All right, so and it's not likely to happen because you cannot bring back the past uh, and make any change, all right? For example, if I met him, I would give him the parcel. The truth is that I didn't meet him, and the time I would have met him is already past, is, is already in the past. And so, and I, I didn't give him the password. That's just the truth. So it's an unlikely condition. It's not something that is likely uh, to happen. So it's used to talk about an unlikely event in the future. Talking about something that has already passed, how can you bring it into the future? Then the third conditional is an impossible condition. Completely impossible. The structure is if plus past perfect is a past condition, and then another past perfect, you know, the condition has been, was already completed in the past, and the result was already completed in the past, so everything is done and dusted, and it is impossible to change it. All right, so it's impossible to change the result. For example, if you had studied hard 
you would have passed your exams. The point is you didn't study hard and you didn't pass your exams. And it is all done and dusted and it is impossible to change the situation. So this third conditional is used in talking about an impossible situation. And that is why it is called an impossible conditional. It's an impossible conditional. It's so it is used in talking about an impossible situation. And that is why it is called the impossible conditional. Now, having taken a look at, you know, uh, the conditional, the, the, the various types of conditionals, four of them, let's now go with this understanding to look at what the, a mixed conditional is all about. What is a mixed conditional? Of course, when you mix something, let's find out what is, it is about really. A mixed conditional uh, is a conditional sentence in which the tense in the main clause is different from the tense in the conditional clause. All right? That is the if clause. In other words, a mixed conditional does not follow the usual patterns of zero, first, second, and third conditionals in terms of the time relationship between the clauses. You know, when we looked at this, the four conditionals, we looked at the way uh, they are the sequence of tenses, all right? The zero has the simple present followed by a simple present. Then the first conditional has the simple present followed by a simple future. The second conditional has a simple past followed by a simple past. And then the third conditional has a past perfect followed by a past perfect. Now, a missed conditional is a conditional that doesn't follow any of these patterns. The, when the pattern is completely different from any of these, all right, then it's a mixed conditional. All right, so now let's look at types of mixed conditionals and how to use them. Types of mixed conditionals and how to use them. Let's look at them. Now, different types of mixed conditionals. Let's call this first one a uh, mixed conditional one, all right? Miss M MC here uh, is just our way of representing mixed conditional. So mixed conditional one. Now, this mixed conditional one uh, is having a past condition with a present result. And the structure is if plus past participle plus would plus, you know, the base form of the verb or with B and ING verb, all right? So let's look at the example. Uh, let's not sound uh, too technical because it might be complex. It's complex already. So let's avoid the, the, te the technical details and let's look at uh, what the examples and let's look at exactly what the the semantic implication because here we are talking about a past condition with a present result let's focus on that now if he hadn't missed that fly if he hadn't missed that fly that's a past condition if he hadn't missed that fly he would be dead right now. All right, let's look at the situation. You know, someone uh, rushed to the airport to, you know, to catch his flight, and on getting there, he discovered that he had missed the flight. There was traffic on the way, so he missed the flight. And then, after a few hours, then there is news report that that very uh, aircraft that he would have boarded 
uh, had a crash and all the passengers on board died in the crash. So if you have such a situation, then you can say if he hadn't missed that flight, he would be dead by now. That means his, his missing the flight was a blessing in disguise. All right? Because that was his savior. If the missing the flight was his savior, if he hadn't missed that flight, he would be dead by now. If he hadn't missed that flight, he would be dead by now. All right? So you can see we have a past condition. His missing the flight happened in the past. And then we are getting the report now that all the people on board died. And we have a present a result, a current situation. And the reality dawns on us that if he hadn't missed that flight, he would be dead by now. He would be among the people uh, reported dead. All right. So that is uh, what we mean by, you know, a mixed condition, mixed conditional. All right. So let's look at a mixed conditional too. Don't forget this. We are dealing with this in no particular order. All right. We are, we are giving different uh, types of misconditionals in no particular order. Now, misconditional two in no particular order, take note. Then we have, uh, we use this uh, particular one to talk about a past condition with a future result. A past condition with a future result. The structure is if plus past, ten, uh, past perfect plus would, would plus be plus verb uh, with ing. That's a present participle. Or sometimes it could be the, 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 the base form of the verb, which is v, v1. Now let's take the example. If he hadn't sustained injury in the last match, he would be playing in tomorrow's match. All right? There's, his club is going to play tomorrow. But you see, he sustained an injury in the last match, which was a past event that happened. You know, that past event now gave rise to an existing uh, condition. With that condition in place, without that situation, he would be playing in tomorrow's match. So, but the truth is that he, uh, he already, he sustained, he had sustained injury in the last match, so he wouldn't be playing in tomorrow's match, all right? If he hadn't sustained injury in the last match, he would be playing in tomorrow's match. Meanwhile, all these misconditionals are dealing with unreal situations, unreal situations. They are not dealing with actual situations. Although we will take a look at a likely, you know, mixed uh, uh, conditional, a, condi a mixed conditional that uh, can deal with a real situation. All right. Now, mixed conditional three, uh, we use it to talk about a present condition with a past result. A present condition with a past result, and the structure is if plus simple past. Uh, plus would, uh, would have plus past participle. All right, so let's look at the example. If I had the money, simple past, had, if I had the money, I would have bought that house. All right? I would have bought that house. If I had the money, I would have bought that house. All right? So that is exactly... Uh, the example, if I had that money, I would have bought that house. Now, you discover that you are dealing with uh, a present uh, situation, all right? If I had that money, I would have bought that house, all right? So that actually is a situation. Now, mixed conditional number four, uh, we are dealing with if plus simple past plus would be 
then a verb with ing. Now, this is used to talk about a present condition with a future uh, result. For example, if I were not busy, I will surely be visiting grandma this weekend. You see, visiting grandma is a future event, all right? But because I am busy right now, I won't be visiting grandma this weekend. If I were not busy, I would surely be visiting grandma this weekend. So we are talking about a present condition with a future result. All right, so now let's uh, look at other types and examples that will buttress them. Miss conditional five. And here we are going to talk about a future condition with a past result. If plus past participle plus would plus would have plus past participle. For example, if I were not going to pay my rent, I would have lent you the money. All right? If I were not going to pay the, my rent, I would have lent you the money. You see, so it's a future uh, condition. Uh, I am going to pay my rent. That's a future condition. If I were not going to pay my rent, mixed right, conditional I number six, I would have lent you the money. All in right? mixed conditional so, number six, and we are looking is, at a future uh, condition results with a present result. I could not lend you the money is, because. Is, I am plus thinking the of simple past my rent that I am going to plus pay. Plus right? be, and then, then the conditional of the no. verb or the ing form of the verb. For example, if the government we are not going to pay the workers tomorrow, the union would refuse to call off the strike. If the government we are not going to pay the workers tomorrow, that is a future condition. The union would refuse to call off the strike. All right? That means the strike should be going on right now. So we, here we have a future condition with a present result. All right? We can say if the government we are not going to pay the workers tomorrow, the workers would be on strike right now. The workers would be on strike right now. All right. Now, these are the mixed conditionals. We have looked at six of them, and they are all talking about on real situations, all right? But let's look at mixed real conditionals, you know, conditional, mixed conditionals that are dealing with uh, real situations. Uh, and here we can talk about a past condition with a future result. For example, if Rose got the text, the text message, she will attend the seminar tomorrow. Now, this is a past condition because, you know, let's look at a situation like this. You know, uh, a text message was sent to, to Rose probably yesterday or earlier in the, in the morning or in the day. And there are several possibilities that she got the message, all right? So if Rose got the message, you know, if she got the text message, the text message had already been sent. So if she got it, you know, the, what will be the result? She will attend the seminar tomorrow, you know, because the text message is an invitation for her to attend the seminar, all right? So if Rose got the text message, she will attend the seminar tomorrow. So it's still uh, a possible situation, you know, she can still attend the seminar 
uh, because we are talking about it uh, uh, today and the, the seminar is taking place tomorrow. So it's still a real situation. There is a possibility that Rose can attend the seminar. All right. Based on her getting the text message. Then the second example, if he took a flight, he will be at home before nine. If he took a flight, you know, look at the situation. You know, the person being talked about left, probably uh, left a place. Let's assume the person uh, left London. All right. Or let's talk within a country. The person left uh, Abuja and the person is, is coming to Lagos, all right? And so we look at the time it takes a flight to get to Lagos from Abuja. And within the time we are talking about, then we say, well, if actually, if he took a flight, if that was his, the means of transportation he adopted, then surely we expect him to be home before nine. So that is a real situation. If he took a flight, you know, if he didn't take a train, if he didn't take a bus, if he didn't board a car, if he took a flight, he will be home before nine. Now, if he took a bus, probably we might expect him by midnight or probably tomorrow morning. So that is a real situation, all right? So these are examples of, you know, different types of mixed conditionals. And I hope you have actually been able to uh, understand what mixed conditionals are. This is where we are going to draw the curtain in today's video. Uh, we have been talking about mixed conditional sentences we first looked at what a conditional sentence is. We then uh, looked at, you know, the various conditional sentences, four of them, zero conditional, first, second, and tenth conditionals. Then we went ahead to look at what a mixed conditional is. And when a, a, a conditional sentence is mixed, is a departure from the normal conditional sentences we know, which are four, all right? Zero conditional that states facts or universal truth. Then the first, first conditional, uh, you know, that states a likely condition. The second one that states an unlikely condition. The third one that states an impossible condition. So we looked at all these. And then we went ahead to look at the conditional, the mixed conditional. All right. We looked first looked at the mixed conditionals that deal with unreal situations. Then we looked at a mixed conditional that deals with a real situation. I hope you enjoyed today's video. And I hope that with what you have learned from today's video, uh, you'll be able to communicate more effectively using conditional and mixed conditionals. You can understand that when you master the use of conditional sentences and mixed conditional sentences, uh, it gives you uh, a variety. You know, it enables you to use language in a variety of ways, all right? And that is really uh, increasing your proficiency. If you enjoyed today's video, uh, like the video and share the video with your friends and relations. If you have not subscribed to this channel, this is the time to do that. Kindly uh, click on the subscribe button below. The moment you subscribe to this channel, of course, you have access, free access to all the videos on the channel. Uh, and that is why you need to click on the bell icon as well so that whenever a new video is uploaded, you will be instantly informed so you won't miss any new video here on this channel. 
Now, if you have any questions, any comments, any concerns, any suggestions, please leave them in the comments in the comments section below. Once again, I want to thank you for being part of today's episode and for lending your support to this channel. You are all highly esteemed, all, all you guys out there who have really, really supported this channel. I want to say a very big thank you to all of you. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye-bye for now and remain blessed.